Modesto back then was a small town, very safe, very quiet, uh, rural community, farm, agriculture kind of community, still is agriculture. And uh, this was small town living, and he refers to it as kind of like growing up in the Midwest, uh, which as opposed to, you know, people think of California, beaches and surfing. That's not what Modesto was. Modesto was a farm town. We've lived at this residence since 1946, which is directly across the street from the home where George Lucas was born and raised. His room was completely loaded with uh, art that young George drew, and uh, that was his passion. At that time already, he had been working and uh, drafting and making these pictures that were uh, sort of <laughs> Similar to Star Wars, shall we say, at that time he must have had some ideas already of what he was going to do in the future. This is the alley between Ramona Avenue and El Cajon. Uh, from what I understand, this is where he and his friends used to play as, as a child in the 1950s. This was a pretty typical middle class neighborhood for Modesto. Modesto was a small town then, about 20,000 people. And the children would, rather than play in the front yards, would play in the backyards, which connected here in the alley. They did all kinds of wonderful things back here. Uh, Lucas says this is where he made his first movie, um, which was using a friend's uh, movie camera. We decided uh, we were going to put together this little war scene. And in his yard, he, uh, in the open area where the flower bed had been, we dug out a uh, area that uh, flattened it and made little roads and stuff and we had these toys and so we decided to make a movie of it. He said, well why don't we make a movie of this? By using a Bell and Howell a camera, old 8mm my parents had, we used to click it, click it and with the stop action create a, an effect of the toys moving around and then we even lit fires and stuff and things blew up. Probably one of the first films he ever made but it was very critical to him. Everything looked right. That I can remember because now that wouldn't look right it doesn't look real, you know. So, I mean, back then it was, who knew that this was going to come out like this? They also would do things like haunted houses. We used uh, my parents' garage and things would drop out of the loft and we had colored lights, strobe light type things that we put together. And we were charging, I don't know, nickel, a dime, I can't remember exactly what it was. And kids were coming to see this. Well, the crowd started to drop off. When I say crowds, the line of kids we had, you know, big thing in the summer not much going on, dog days of summer as they call them. And George, well, we gotta change it around so it's different. So he, he worked hard in a couple days, he changed it around, then we had the new and improved fun house that we did. The kids came back and then he kept doing it. And he did this a couple, three times. I, I marveled at it because as soon as sales would fall off, George would go back and redo it, retweak it, and the kids would come back again. We all thought that was so funny because that's kind of what he did with, with Star Wars when he came out with a special edition, changed a few things and got us all to, to come back and see it again. Back in Modesto, the young Lucas surprised his childhood friends with his clear-cut views on the cinema experience. I think it was 54. The movie came out from Walt Disney called Forbidden Planet. We went there for George's birthday and he was really taken with this, as we all were. All the kids our age were really taken with it, and it was kind of interesting. We were all up in the Logis section of the State Theater, which was a nice theater in town at that time. He said, this is where you enjoy the movie. He said, no, we're going to sit here. He said, because it looks better up here. We didn't, most of the other guys didn't care. We can sit downstairs rather than make a deal out of it. But he wanted to, the full effect of the movie. Forbidden Planet where Robbie the robot plays, and the last member of a vanished civilization takes you deep down into his planet's heart to see the miraculous marvels of a race of geniuses. ...lives of anyone who invades his domain. Welcome to the world of Morbius and his planet of mystery. Welcome to the Forbidden Planet. He would study things, and no matter what it was, he tackled. He would learn it, master it, 
and we used to go to the uh, races, automobile races over at uh, Laguna Seca. And I can still remember going over there a couple times. And he, he was getting certain things out of it. That we were just enjoying the moment. He was learning it. He had this accident, you know. He wasn't at our class graduation because his car was, he had a bad accident. A lot of people have heard about this automobile accident. But from my perspective, it was uh, devastating. I thought I was going to lose a fellow I'd known for a long time because the word was out he wasn't going to make it. That seems to have been a turning point when he reached some decisions about what he was going to do and he he went down south to the film school. I think he became quieter from what I could see and more intense. He had to leave if he was going to do the film and I think once he knew that that was what he wanted to do he had focus.